Comic Boom. Hey guys, Comic Boom here to review Supergirl issue 29. And the great thing about this issue right off the bat is that the cover, that gorgeous cover with Supergirl holding up Rogel Czar's axe, it actually takes place in the comic book. Bendis should take notes because in the first, because in Superman issue 10 this week, what's on the cover has nothing to do with the interior. But I digress. Let's focus on Supergirl 29. Writer Mark Andreco, he should be writing the full Superman Rogel's R narrative because he's much better at it. More is happening in the pages of Supergirl. We learn more about Rogel's R as we always have in the pages of Supergirl than we have in the pages of Superman. This is a really good issue and it is beautifully drawn by Eduardo Panzico. Panzico? Eduardo Panzico. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, but gorgeous art. There's a wonderful uh, variant cover by Amanda, Car Amanda Connor that's really good. And we, we actually learn quite a bit, or at least we, we finally get to a point where Kara, Supergirl, at least knows as much as the reader does about the origins of Rogel's R, and in particular, the circle. Because you gotta remember, uh, ever since Supergirl left Earth, even though the narrative has dragged on somewhat, we, we at least have been subjected to a fairly good story and backstory. We've had the Omega Man, we have Harry Holcomb. We had a lot of fun there. We had Kryptonian clones. So we've had a lot of fun along the way, even though the stories may be, uh, it's taken a while to get some answers. The fact of the matter is we're still getting more answers than we are over in the pages of Superman. And what's great here is that Zindel Cole, who is the son of uh, Empress uh, Gandello, who is a member of the Circle, he, he's basically struggling this issue because he's not sure if he wants to confess to Supergirl that in fact he is, that he was originally a spy sent by his mother to spy on her. But ultimately it all comes out. They're basically on a planet, they're relaxing after the uh, adventures with uh, defeating the forces of Harry Holcomb in the previous three or four issues. And it, it's discovered that Crypto in fact has one of the crystals. Crypto managed to find one of the crystals that um, uh, Aliapsa, the, one of the guardians, told Kara about and that she the whole point was that Kara is supposed to travel to various points in the universe and collect these crystals and these are all clues and when you put all these crystals together the full confession of Ali Apsa would be complete and he would confess and she would discover what the primary confession of the galactic circle the circle actually is and it's discovered of course that confession is that all of the members of the circle, which consisted of a, of a Thanagarian ambassador, uh, the Empress Gandalo, uh, Ran, uh, 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 pardon me, uh, uh, a member from the uh, Adam Strange. Uh, uh, he's from Ran. Anyways, he's a Ranian. Anyways, all the members of the circle, as well as King, uh, as well as uh, uh, King Myander of uh, Tamaran, they all basically, uh, basically recruited Rogelzar. Uh, initially for a good purpose to try to basically have someone uh, battle the force, you know, battle nefarious forces should they ever arise in the universe. But ultimately, the problem that arose, as is often the case, is that power corrupts and that Rogel Czar became ultimately corrupt. And Empress Gandalo uh, wanted to be more proactive and actually be a little bit more power hungry, take planetary forces out and she wanted to recruit Rogelzar for her purposes and that's exactly what she did. So it was Empress Gandalo, Ryander's basically adoptive mother, that basically um, made a deal with Rogelzar and said, look, I will help you destroy Krypton if you come work for me. Of course, uh, that's exactly what happened and in recruiting Rogelzar, they utilized some of uh, Kara's father, uh, Zorel's, or, or pardon me, uh, yes, Zorel's technology. Kara's father is uh, Zorel, and utilizing his technology, they basically Rogelzar helped destroy Krypton, and Gandalo, Empress Gandalo, was part of that. And some more in interesting information about Zindel Cole, who is sort of like the Brainiac Five, Indiana Jones type character. He, in fact, is missing an arm, which we never knew. Even Supergirl never noticed he was missing an arm. When he was about five or six years old, his, uh, there was a planetary disaster, or pardon me, there was a spaceship crash of some kind, and his mother and his family was killed, and he was rescued by Empress Gandalo. And she basically adopted him, essentially, and, and raised him. And she obviously continued to get more corrupt, or at least more corrupt than she already was. Zindel Cole managed to, to keep uh, relatively good at heart, and 
She sent him as a spy, and of course, we know ultimately he's, he betrayed Empress Gandalo. Now, what's interesting is that this, this, so much happens in this issue. This is such a fantastic issue. We got revelations, and we got some, we got some actual action because right in the middle of all this, while they're swimming and they're having, the, they're talking and they're having these revelations, they're attacked by the followers of Rogel Czar. Because, uh, because what happens is that when the crystals are put together. The minute the crystals are in close proximity to Rogelzar's axe, all of a sudden Rogelzar's axe and the crystals uh, that Ali Apsa had, Kara Zorel, Kar that had Supergirl that she gathered, they all mixed together and they 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 created this massive uh, sort of this massive bright light, and that led to Ali Apsa providing the confession that Kara wanted to discover, and. So the crystals are linked to Rogelzar's axe, and the minute that the axe acti the axe activated all the crystals and gave rise to the confession, that was detected by Empress Gandalo, and she sent more of her forces to retrieve Rogelzar's axe. Now Rogelzar apparently has got some crazy followers, and they have symbols of their own, which of course is Rogelzar's symbol, and they attack Supergirl and Zindel Cole and Crypto. And what's very, very interesting is that the, uh, this axe is uh, particular. It's the, the axe is very interesting because it's, in relaying the story of Rogel Czar, it's quite apparent that Rogel Czar himself has got a connection to the axe. But the moment Supergirl picks up the axe, all of the forces that are attacking her, they call her La all hail Lady of the Axe. They call her Lady of the Axe. It's almost like she's the Lady of the Lake in King Arthur lore, in Camelot lore, but the minute they saw that the Axe responded to her and that she controlled the Axe, they got out down on their hands and knees and they're basically worshiping Supergirl now. So where once they were following Rogel Czar, now it's almost as if they're gonna worship her because perhaps they believe that Rogel Czar is dead if the Axe is now going to be followed by, is, is going to be doing the bidding of Supergirl. And what's also interesting is that Ro it showed a flashback of Rogel Czar, presumably still in the Phantom Zone, making some comment that he can feel his axe, he can feel it elsewhere, and that one day he's gonna be reunited with his axe and he's gonna kill all the final remaining Kryptonians in the universe. And so at some point, we know that we're gonna have a battle over that axe, because I'm sure Rogel Czar is gonna wanna reclaim his axe but the, is, the, is the axe sentient? Because the followers of Rogelzar think that only the most worthy can wield the axe of Rogelzar. But we all know that Rogelzar is not a worthy person. He's a piece of crap and he's evil and he's a bastard. So if, if, the, if Rogelzar is worthy to wield the axe, what does that say about Supergirl? <laughs> I mean, we know Supergirl is worthy, but it's interesting that the, that the axe is, cho is choosing to uh, allow Supergirl to use it. That's very interesting. So at some point we're gonna have a battle for the axe between Rogelzar and Supergirl. And again, very interesting. We get some revelations here. Supergirl discovers more about the circle. She knows more about what's going on now than Superman does in the pages of Superman. Superman can't get his head straight. He's battling Leviathan. He's with uh, Super, his, his son who's been aged up seven years nonsensically, battling Rogelzar and General Zod and Jazir over in the pages of Superman issue number 10 at this point. So, lots been going on in Superman, but it's kind of a convoluted narrative over in Superman. At least with Supergirl, we're getting all this information amidst a real fun time and enjoyable backstories and narratives. And it's more, it's more platable, palatable, whatever that word is to me. I'm enjoying it a lot more. Guys, tell me what you think of Supergirl. The art here I think is really good. I'm enjoying the, the flow. The, this story really flowed well in this particular issue. I thought it did a really good, uh, and Draco's been doing a really good job. I really wish that he would let, that that Bendis would let him write the dialogue for, for Superman because Mark and Draco's just doing a really great job and I'm really enjoying it. Tell me what you think guys of Supergirl issue 29. Follow me on Twitter at Metropolis40 and until next time, Comic Boom out.